Good morning, New Life Church, and welcome to our online service. We're so glad that you've joined us and we're believing that God is going to do something especially amazing on this last Sunday of the month. Can you believe that Christmas is almost here? You know, this month in November, we have so much to be thankful for. Uh, America just celebrated Thanksgiving and I'm thankful that we got to have two in-person unlock services at Excelsior. It was such a joy to worship together in one room. And as for the government restrictions, we are now moving our services back online. Hopefully in December, at some point, we'd be able to open again. But thank you for tuning in this Sunday morning with a heart that is expecting for God to move, with a heart that's ready to worship Jesus. And I'm so excited. We get to have a special worship team leading us this morning. They sound amazing. I had a sneak peek of the worship set. And we're so thankful for our friends at Outcast Media for providing this great resource that churches around the world can use this for their worship. So church, participate. There's one new song as well. Listen to the lyrics, sing along, put a comment in if you've been blessed. And let's get into worship this morning. God bless you.
Psalms 10726. Redeem the Lord, tell their story. Come on, will you join with us and declare this together? He led me out of the desert, brought me into his streams, river of living water, turned my bitter in a sweet, and now my burns are lifted. He took the shackles in my feet. There's no sound now that they the captive set free. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Sing of his promises evermore. Pour out the heavens, let it overflow. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. It calls me a song There's a hallelujah After sweet victory There's no sound
Welcome everyone, good to be here together again and all those watching online, God bless you as you join with us New Life Church. As we continue in our series, we've been talking about the keys that unlock, the keys to unlocking the breakthrough in this year of breakthrough. We looked in uh, Matthew chapter 16 about Peter. And Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say? Who do people say I am? And Peter gets his revelation and he says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Isn't that amazing? And Jesus was so amazed that uh, he said, flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, Peter, but my father in heaven. And he said, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. And I give you the keys of the kingdom. And we've been looking at these three keys to unlock breakthrough. The, the key of revelation, the key of knowing and declaring who Jesus is, that he's our savior, that he's the Messiah, that he is the Lord, he's the Christ, he's the son of the living God. And as soon as we declare that, we receive the key, the key or of our identity. And that's what I want to share with today. The key of a changed identity. And last Sunday we looked at also the key of authority. When Jesus told Peter, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Let's look today as we talk about the key of our identity. When I was saved about 40 years ago, I knew instantly that I was you know, forgiven. I was, I felt cleansed for the first time in my life. I had the joy of salvation and scripture. I began to understand like I had never done. And I had a clear sign from God that my tongue was cleansed. And from that day onwards, I never spoke a word of profanity. It's just amazing. But there were many issues that were still there in my life that I had uh, still struggled with. I struggled with feelings of inadequacy. I struggled with hurts from my past that needed healing, a poor self-image uh, that, that was not good, needed transformation. You know, and understanding and focusing on what God says about my new identity, that was so important. And as I began to understand that, as I began to focus on my new identity about who God says I am, it helped me greatly in overcoming the many areas and I am still overcoming. I want to challenge us today that we are new in Christ Jesus. We have a new identity. Our scripture text today from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. This is a memory verse. We should all know it. Say it many times. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone. The new is here. Isn't that a wonderful scripture? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, you know, Peter understood the Messiah, the Christ. You know, it's as if through that revelation, he became one in Christ. And here the scripture, Paul is telling us, if anyone, if you or me, we are in Christ, that means we believe in our heart that Jesus is a Messiah. Jesus died for our sins. Jesus went to the cross for us. Jesus is our Savior. We believe in our heart. We confess it with our mouth. We say, Jesus, you are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are in Christ. It says you're a new creation. You have a new identity. Peter received a new identity. Jesus said, 
You were Simon, but now I give you a new name, a new identity. You are Peter. Simon meaning reed, swaying, moving with the wind. And now God says, Peter, you are Peter. You're a rock. You're solid. You're strong. You know, if Peter really understood his identity at that time, if he focused on it, and if he received it, and he confessed it, I believe he would not have vacillated. He was still kind of a, a reed. He would tell Jesus, all these guys may disown you, they may desert you, but I never will. And he really tried so hard. He got swords and he wanted to fight for Jesus. And he cut off that servant's ear. But he was not in his new identity. He hadn't understood it. He, it hadn't really sunk in. He was not walking in that new identity of being a rock. And so he ran away from Jesus. He denied Jesus three times. Even a little slave girl, you know, confronted him about his identity. Weren't you with Jesus? He denied it. So he was still being a reed. He was not walking in his new identity of being a rock. Today, I want us to look at three aspects to get the key of my identity Number one is that the reality, we need to see the reality of our new identity, of my new identity. Secondly, the struggles of my new identity. And thirdly, the secret of walking in my new identity. You know, we receive our new identity immediately, just like Peter did, received his new identity. He became the rock, he became strong. Jesus said, this is your new identity. And we too, when we come into Christ, our text, our scripture that we read, we are brand new creations. We have a new identity. The old has gone. And usually there's a manifestation. I want to challenge you that, to remember your salvation experience. When you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what a glorious time that was when your life was transformed when immediately you have peace. And I've heard so many testimonies of people who share their experience of coming into Christ and they are very different. Each one has a unique experience. But it's the same in the sense that there's been a change, there's been an affirmation, there's been an understanding that God touched them. Some say they received an amazing peace. Some say that suddenly they knew that God had accepted them. Or they knew for, sh- for the first time, like I felt, that I was clean, I was cleansed. You know, it is, uh, this new identity is a spiritual reality. Sometimes we look on the external and say, well, I'm the same person, I have the same name, I have the same address, I have the same financial situation. But in the spirit, it's completely different. The Bible tells us that we have moved from darkness to light, from the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of God, from spiritual death to spiritual life, from being a sinner now to being a saint, from being a citizen of hell now to be a citizen of heaven, where names are written in heaven. Before our names were written in hell, we were the children of the devil, of the evil one. Now we are the children of God. You know, the Bible says we were dead, uh, we, we were dead to God and we were alive to sin, but now we are dead to sin and alive to God. The scripture in Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 4 to 6, it says, But because of its great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, verse 5, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. This is a spiritual reality that happens, that we were dead in our transgressions, in our sins, and it says here that we were made alive in Christ. That's a new identity. It's by grace you have been saved. And verse 6, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. That's the spiritual reality. You may feel the same, you may think you're the same, but the spiritual reality of the new creation is that you are 
spiritually positioned, seated with Christ in heavenly places. And really think about it. If Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, and if nothing can separate us from the love of God, then we are seated right there with him. You know, the Bible says this new creation, this new identity, you know, we have one new nature. Sometimes we think we have two natures. It's almost like uh, we are split personalities. Sometimes I'm Dr. Jekyll and sometimes I'm Mr. Hyde. Sometimes I'm a saint, sometimes I'm a sinner. Sometimes I'm, I can be really good, sometimes I'm a rascal. And sometimes we, we think that we are dual natured. But our scripture that we mentioned today is in fact we are really new creation. The scripture says the old has gone. We, we don't have the old nature. We are a new nature. Our new identity is brand new and the old identity is gone. You know, before we were slaves to sin, now we are slaves of righteousness. In Romans 6 and verse 18, it says, You have been set free from sin and become slaves to righteousness. Isn't that a wonderful picture? Think yourself of yourself having no freedom to do anything but righteousness. That before you were a slave to sin, you had no freedom. All you could do was sin. You were a sinner and you sinned. But now you're a slave to righteousness and all you can do is do right. Now, the Bible says we were dead, we were buried, we were raised, we are ascended and we are seated with Christ. As we mentioned already in the scripture in Ephesians, in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 says, you have been raised with Christ. Amen. And Colossians 3 and verse 3 says, For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Do you see the reality of your new identity? Often we look from our perspective, when we look at our own lives and we try to gauge our spiritual identity, our new identity based on our performance. I want to encourage us. Let's look to the word of God say, what does God say? What is our true spiritual reality, our spiritual identity, our new identity? And it's so glorious. It's so wonderful what Jesus has done. And we need to now raise our life and our behavior, our actions, our thoughts to the level of what God has done. Amen. Now, even though this is the reality of our new identity, we still have many struggles in this new identity. There are certain things that, you know, instantly don't go. You and I know that. For example, the flesh. Now, what is the flesh? Some people think the flesh is the body. No, it isn't. Our bodies are good. They are holy. They are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Our bodies are wonderful. God lives in us. You know, and we need to treat our bodies well and to treat them as holy vessels of the Spirit of God. But the flesh really is certain coping mechanisms, worldly strategies that we had developed to try and justify ourselves before God. You know, where we lean on our works, our religious actions and behaviors and try to impress God. And these are old programs that are sometimes still stuck in our brains. You know, when people think that oh, they can impress God, try to get something from God based on things that we do. God, if I, uh, if I only give you more money or give you more time, if I do this, if I pray more, I read my Bible more, then I can get something from you. This is the flesh. Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, uh, Paul says that he could put a lot of confidence in the flesh and his flesh was amazing. You know, th those were the things that he could boast about in Philippians 3 and verses 3 to 6. I won't read that whole passage, but, uh, you know, basically Paul is saying if, if any of us think that they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, that's in verse 4, you know, he had more. 
He says he was circumcised on the eighth day. He was of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, a Pharisee. He was zealous. He was persecuting the church. And if there's righteousness based on the law, he was faultless. This was, these were all his fleshly ways of trying to impress God. You know, based on his own actions, based on his pedigree, based on his learning, based on his action, based on his zeal. You know, that's the flesh. And today, some of us may still, you know, try to go back into the flesh and try to uh, impress God or get righteousness based on our actions, based on our works and based on what we are doing. You know, we have to live by the spirit and not by the flesh. You know, it's in, in not our old self. Our flesh is not our old self because the Bible says very clearly in Galatians 2.20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. Amen. Our old self is gone. The flesh is not our old self because I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, sometimes the flesh can look pretty good. Like the Galatian church, you know, they had so wonderfully, from Gentile background, they had come to Christ. And uh, then they, you know, thought, let's add on to faith. Let's add on to grace. Perhaps grace is not sufficient. Maybe we should do some good works. And they thought, maybe if we keep the law of Moses, maybe if we keep the Ten Commandments, and maybe if we get circumcised, then it would be better. And so the flesh can, can seem a little good. And Paul rebukes them in Galatians 3 and verse 3. says, are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the Spirit, are you trying to finish by means of the flesh? You know, all of us have a tendency to revert back to things of the flesh and move away from the spirit to the flesh. And we need to understand that, that we need to live according to our new reality, our new spirit, our new identity. The second thing is sin. So, sin is another challenge that we face. You know, God told Cain in the book of Genesis, Cain, in the book of Genesis, chapter 4 and verse 7, says, Cain, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. You know, sin is an external thing, like a virus, like we're all fighting this coronavirus and COVID-19, that virus is trying to come into our system, right? And here, God is telling Cain, if you open the door by doing something wrong, sin is just waiting to jump in. And we know the story of Cain and Abel, that Cain did something wrong. Cain did not offer a proper sacrifice. He didn't give the first portion he didn't give the first fruits, you know, and God didn't look with favor and Cain became angry and the door be was being opened and sin was ready to jump in. In Romans 7 and verses 17 and 20, Paul is struggling with sin. He's saying, as it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. He's talking about this virus of sin that's come into him and making him do things that he doesn't want to do. Verse 20, he says, Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it's sin living in me that does it. It's like the coronavirus that comes into you. You know, your body doesn't want to raise its temperature, but the virus that's come in causes you to have a fever. Sin is is not you. Sin is a, another entity that wants me to fall. So we have struggles. Even though we have a new identity, sin is trying to pull us down. But we have a responsibility. We must not let sin rule over us. We were slaves to sin, but now we are slaves to righteousness. 
And what we need to do is say, sin, you, have no, you are no longer my master. You have no place in my life. We must not allow it to reign in our mortal bodies. And how do we do that? Paul says in Romans 6, in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin. So when sin comes knocking at your door, uh, say, sorry, that person does not live here anymore. He was dead. He was crucified with Christ. He no longer lives. And verse 12 of Romans 6 says, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies. So you and I have a choice. Don't let sin reign or rule in our mortal bodies. Are you understanding your new identity? There are challenges. There's the flesh. These old programs that try to come in and trip us up. There is sin that's waiting, crouching at the door, waiting to come in. But we need to reckon ourselves, count ourselves dead to sin and alive to God. We have another enemy. It's the world. Jesus says in John 16 and verse 11, and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. You know, the enemy has this world system that's constantly trying to attack us. But it is a fallen system. It's a system that tries to affect us, whether it is through sin or sickness or disease or poverty or pollution, pandemics. So many ways the world tries to at attack us and the world tries to lure us into its mold. And Jesus says in John chapter 15 and verse 19, if you belong to the world, it would love you as, it, as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. We are not to love the world. John tells us in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. Amen. Are you getting this message today? That you have a new identity. Amen. The flesh is not your identity. The flesh is something of the past that's trying to come in. Uh, old ways of coping. And you've got to crucify the flesh. That is say no. Say no to the flesh. Say no to those old ways of coping. Say no to those old ways of trying to justify yourself. Or try to make yourself righteous through your own works. Sin is waiting at the door. Sin has no power over you. You are a slave, not of sin, but of righteousness. The world is trying to lure you. You've got to not love it. You are not of the world. We are of Christ. That's the new identity. And our enemy, the devil, may use all these to try to attack us. The Bible says he's like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But if you understand, if I understand my new identity, I will resist him. I say, devil, sorry. I don't give in to the flesh. I resist sin and I say no to the world. I hate the world and you have no place in my life. You may roam around, but you will not see no entry. I give you no entry into my life. I want to close this message about our new identity and Talk about the secret. How do we walk in this new identity? How do we have success? How do we use the key of our new identity to unlock breakthroughs in our life? Number one is we need to understand our new identity. We need to meditate on it. We need to affirm it that really I am a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. That I am alive. I'm not dead. I have eternal life. Before I was dead to God and alive to sin, but now I'm alive to God and dead to sin. We need to affirm that I am a child of God. My father is the maker of the universe. He owns everything. God, the Holy Spirit, lives in me and bears witness that I am a, I am a child of God. Do you hear the voice of the Spirit within you? That's crying out. It says, Abba, Daddy, Father. I am God's child. 
the maker and creator of the whole universe is my daddy, Abba, Father. That's my new identity. I am a child of God. And the Bible says everything is mine. I am in Christ and Christ is of God. 1 Corinthians 3 verses 21 and 23. So then now, no more boasting about human le uh, leaders. All things are yours. Do you hear that? All things are yours. He has given us everything we need for life and for godliness. Amen. He's blessed us with everything. And verse 23 says, you are of Christ and Christ is of God. Amen. Everything is ours. And our new identity, we understand it. I am totally forgiven. Every sin of mine is forgiven. You know, even my, my past sins, my present sins, my future sins are totally forgiven. You know, if we know that we are forgiven, we know that we are cleansed, we know that we are the righteousness of God, we won't want to sin. Why would we want to hurt the God who loves us so much? You know, sin has no place in our lives. You know, we put to death our flesh. We say no to sin. We say no to the world. Sin has no place. I'm, am I saying that we will be sinless? No. But even if we do sin, you know, the Bible says in Hebrews 10 and verse 14, by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Amen. You and I are being made holy in our new identi identity. We are being set apart, set apart from sin, set apart from the flesh, set apart from the world and set apart unto God. And Jesus died once to forgive us of all sin and make us perfect forever. Therefore, there is now no condemnation. If any of you are here listening to this and you think, how can God forgive me? I repeat the same sin over and over again. I want to encourage you. You don't need to. You have been set free. You need to affirm that. You need to confess that. You need to believe it. You need to say no to sin. You need to hate sin. You need to turn away from it. Turn to God and receive the strength and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to walk in victory. Your new identity my new identity. I'm an overcomer. I'm seated with him in heavenly places and I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I'm more than a conqueror and Jesus leads me in triumphant procession. Amen. You know, we need to believe it against our own experience. I want to once again remind us of Abraham, this wonderful story of this man in Romans 4, one of my favorite passages in the Bible about Abraham, Romans 4, verses 18 to 21. And it, I'll just paraphrase it here that against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. You know, Abraham had a new identity. God put his breath into Abram and made him Abraham and changed his identity and said, you will be not just Abram, which means exalted father, but you'll be Abraham, the father of many nations. Now that identity had to be fulfilled, but Abraham had no child, you know, and God had said to him, so shall your offspring be. In Romans 4 verse 19, you know, it talks about how Abraham made his new identity a reality. It said, without weakening in his faith, without weakening in his faith, that means he believed in this new identity. He believed that he would be a father of many nations. He believed that he was Abraham. And he said, he faced the facts. He didn't deny the fact that, you know, he was too old. His wife was too old. He perhaps would never have a child. He faced the facts. And today you and I can face the facts. That even though our new identity says something, we're living far below that new identity. Perhaps we are living according to the flesh or perhaps we're giving in to sin or perhaps we've been molded by the world. You know, face the fact. But then what did he do? He faced the fact his body was as good as theirs, that there's no way that they could naturally have a child. But you know, God's word transcends the reality. 
God's word can transform your reality. And he's, in verse 20 he says, He did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God. I want to challenge us today. Don't waver through unbelief regarding what God says about you, your new identity. But what did he do? It says he gave glory to God. That means he started praising God, said, Lord, thank you that I am a father of many nations. Yes, my body is as good as dead. Sarah's womb is also dead. But God, I thank you. You have promised that I will be a father of many nations. I believe God wants us to do that. You face the facts of your situation, but you declare who you are. You confess who you are, your new identity. You're a child of God. All things are passed away. All things are, have become new. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. You're seated with him in heavenly places. You're an overcomer. You have victory. God has given you everything that you need for life and for godliness. Amen that you will not live according to the flesh. You will not allow sin to come into your life. You will not be molded by the word. You live for God. You know, keep praising God. Focus on your new identity. That is the key to this breakthrough. Coming back to our story of Peter, what if Peter meditated on this? He said, I'm no longer Simon. I'm no longer a reed. I'm no longer shifting. I am solid. I'm a rock. I'm Peter. If he had meditated on it and he had lived according to it, when the temptation came, when the pressure came, he would have overcome. And I believe he did that on the day of Pentecost when he stood up like a rock and he gave this wonderful message and 3,000 people were saved. Hallelujah. Amen. God's word to us will come to pass. Our new identity as we focus on it. I want to challenge us, church. Can you think about it? Supposing all of us as a church, each of us individually focused on our identity, that we are amazing children of God, that we are conquerors, we are seated with God. Wouldn't our church be just so wonderful? Wouldn't the city of Gurgaon and Delhi and North India be transformed as people see a people who know their God, a people who preach the gospel, a people who live the gospel, a people who has a city set on a hill, hallelujah, a people who know that they have authority in Christ, a people who know their God and do great exploits. Amen. Our new identity is a reality. It's a spiritual reality. There may be many challenges to it, to living in it, but we must walk according to our new identity to experience the transformation, to experience the change, to experience the victorious Christian life. Amen. Am I saying that this will happen overnight? Am I saying that your life will suddenly become just great? No, there'll still be challenges. There'll be difficulties there will be problems there will be challenges but we need to affirm and like abraham facing the facts all around us give glory to god knowing that god has power to do what he has promised amen church let's draw our hearts around to the communion table can you bring your elements today as we uh, Focus on what Jesus did for us. I want to read a scripture from Philippians 2 verses 6 and 7. Talking about Jesus who being in very nature God. Did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Verse 7. Rather he made himself nothing. By taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. You know, Jesus was made in human likeness. The Bible says he became sin for us. God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin for us, so that in him we might be the righteousness of God. You know, Jesus became nothing. He became poor, the Bible says, so that we could become rich. The Bible says he took our sickness and our infirmities so that by his stripes we might be healed. He bore our shame. He carried our griefs so that we may have relief. We may have glory. 
He made himself nothing, the scripture says, so that we, you and I could become something, the sons and daughters of God. Do you see the price as we break bread today? Let us thank Jesus for the price that he paid and let us partake of this bread together. And after supper, he took the cup I said, this is a cup of a new covenant in my blood. You know, he sealed this. Now every promise of God is sure. As we partake of it, know that your identity has been sealed. Your identity as a child of God, as an overcomer. Let us partake. Can we pray together? Heavenly Father, I thank you for your people listening today. I thank you, God, that you poured out your love into our hearts by your Holy Spirit. And today, the word that has been ministered about our identity, we affirm it, Lord. And we agree that we're going to live according to this new identity. Where Jesus, you died on the cross to pay for us. And Father, I bless each one listening today that God, no matter what the circumstances, even as we face the facts, but we give glory to you, God, because you have power to do what you have promised, to transform our lives and to make us according to the pattern and the image of Christ. I bless each one today. I ask, Father, that you pour out your spirit in a fresh way. I pray every door for the enemy be closed. Your people be protected. No virus shall come near them. No disaster shall befall them. Father, I pray for a release and a breakthrough in every area. I pray financial releases on your people. I pray that your people be set free from fear. And we will live in the glorious freedom of the sons and daughters of God. Thank you for hearing our prayer. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Victor, for that amazing word this morning. How many of you have been blessed through this series on Breakthrough? We've learned the breakthrough of our confession of faith, the breakthrough that comes when we know our authority, and today as we have learned about our identity in Christ. Come on, let's just say this with our mouth today and confess that I am a child of God. I am a new creation. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just clap and thank God for what he's doing. Church, as we move forward this morning with our worship, we, we believe in our church that giving of our money, giving of our substance is such an essential part of our worship. And I have a great project that I want to share with you that is giving towards the kingdom of God being advanced. So the New Life Church production project is a project that God has led us to. In this year, we have learned how to produce high quality videos and services. We've recorded worship songs that have been used and they've gone out to people to share the gospel. So our vision through this project is so we would buy equipment that would be useful to sharing the gospel and taking our services that are happening in Gurgaon to the ends of the earth so that the gospel would be preached, that people would know the grace of God, the love of God and the goodness of God. So how can you partner with us? We have a big budget of 9.31 lakhs. It sounds big every time I say it, but I believe that through our church, God is going to help us to raise this money within the church. And by the end of this year, we will be able to own all the equipment that we need to produce our Sunday services and to share what's happening in our church with people online. I'm just going to share some numbers with you on the screen right now. This is the impact that we have already had. And I believe that this will only grow in the next year. So how you can partner with us is by praying. We need a lot of prayer on how to use the equipment, how to use media and content that will reach people. We need prayer for this big budget that we have. So I want you to pray and ask God, God, how can I be a part of this? Maybe you look at it and you think, hey, it's the end of the month. How can I give towards such a big cause? You know, I believe that we have over 200 people who call this church their home. 
if each one of us can prayerfully and by faith sow into this, we will meet this budget really quickly. If you'd like, you can even volunteer with us. Maybe you have past experience with cameras or any broadcast equipment. We can use you and we can train you. So if you'd like to volunteer, go to our website, churchnewlife.in, and there's a section there that has where you can sign up for a serve team. Amen. So church, I want to encourage you again, keep praying about this. And as God leads you without any pressure, feel free to give. We're going to put the QR code now on the screen. And if you'd like to give towards production, which involves buying cameras, broadcast equipment and uh, buying laptops and, and computers, then you can in your uh, when you give online, just make a comment. They're saying production or for NLC production, and we will divert all the funds towards this project. Church, if you'd like to give of your regular tithes and offerings, please feel free to do so on the QR code that comes up on the screen now. And I just want to bless you today and let me pray for you as we give to God today. Lord, I just pray for every New Life Church member, even if a guest is giving online this morning, and we just pray that you bless the generous gifts of your church, Lord. We know that you are no man's debtor. We have uh, the righteous will never be forsaken, nor their children will go hungry or begging for bread. So we bless everyone today who is giving, some who have given sacrificially, even when they don't have jobs, they have cho chosen to sow into your kingdom. We speak a blessing over them, a breakthrough in their finances in the name of Jesus. God bless you, church. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today in our online service. Church, I'm excited to announce the third wedding bands for our dear friends Rohit Katumala and Namrata Singh. They're gonna get married on 5th of December. Come on, wherever you are, let's just clap for them and be praying for the couple as they prepare for this special day. And if anyone objects, please get in touch with our senior pastor, Pastor Victor. Before we go forward, I have this short video to share with you today where our Kids Life teachers are encouraging our children even as we celebrate a Children's Day in this month. Come on, enjoy as you watch it. Hey you guys, it's Miss Anina here. And I just want to say, it's been such a blessing to be one of your kids' life teachers. Each one of you is so unique. I love the way each one of you loves God. And you might not believe it, but you teach me a few things too every time we have kids' life together. Continue to love God and to put Him first. And remember, you are incredible! It gives me really immense pleasure to teach at Junior Kids Life uh, and to learn from kids. Uh, you almost know everything and uh, I really admire the way you participate in songs, games and the stories that we tell and you remember a lot of them and I wanted to tell you that God loves you. Jesus loves each one of you and I love you too. I wish you all the best. Uh, in the days to come, uh, may God bless you and you prosper in each and everything that you do. Hi kids, uh, uh, Lavanash here and I just want to uh, you know, thank God for each one of you because uh, on Saturdays or on Sundays when I take uh, the kids life class, uh, it's a real blessing to see each one of you grow so much. Uh, you guys are such amazing listeners. Uh, you guys, are, you take part and you're always involved. All the best and happy Children's Day to each one of you. Hello kids. Each one of you, you are so special. You are created by God and you have such potential. God has great things in store for you. And I want to encourage you from the scripture in Acts where Paul says, remember what Jesus said, that it is more blessed to give and to receive. You know, giving is so much greater than getting. And while we give you, we really get so much more from you. And I want to encourage you that as you live your life giving, giving to God, giving to others, you will be so blessed. We love you so much. Hi kids, 
It's been a joy and a blessing to teach you guys this year. We've had some great discussions, some unexpected show and tells, and some beautiful singing in kids' life this year. I have been especially excited to teach you the current series where we talk about how beautiful, awesome, and unique God has made each one of you. And I hope that you believe that with all of your heart. And if you ever need reminding, you can just ask any of your parents and your teachers and we'll all be happy to remind you just how incredible each of you are. Happy Children's Day, kids. We love you. Wow, wasn't that amazing? We just want to appreciate right now all our teachers in Kids Life for all the work that you're doing with the kids and for teaching them the Word of God. Church, if you don't have your kids involved yet in these ministries, I just want to encourage you today. We have seen amazing growth happening in our ministries. We have Kids Life happening on Saturdays and Teens Life happening on Sundays. You will see the details on the screen. And to sign up, I would encourage you to go to our website. It will be shown below and uh, you can find all the details there. I also want to encourage you today, be a part of Life Group. We've been saying that again and again, but it's so important. The Bible says it's so important to stay in fellowship, to have people around you who can stand with you in agreement even as you struggle. We have amazing time in our Life Group and we love each other. We are like a family. So even if you are new to this city, you don't know much around, I would just encourage you, be a part of Life Group and you will feel right at home. You will feel like you are in a family already. And once again, we just want to thank you for joining today. And I hope you have a blessed week ahead. God bless you.